So what's up, people, and welcome to the chapter 13 discussion of Bokura no Ketsume, or Our Blood Oath. So chapter 13 came out, I think, about five days ago. And as always, I will leave a link to this chapter in the description section of this video, uh, where it's being shown by the publisher's official website, Manga Plus, for the North American audience. So if you're interested and if you're in the region, uh, yeah, go take a look at it. So chapter 13, chapter 13 was quite interesting. If you remember in chapter 12, you know, we got into a little bit of that uh, understanding of Ko and Shin, especially Ko and his uh, position as a uh, royalty, basically the heir to the throne. And this continues on in this chapter and we start learning a little bit more about the situation. I finally remember the name of the uh, yeah that guy <laughs> yeah it turns out he is a guy he's not a girl uh, his name is Cain and of all things he is a member of the Akatsuki yeah <laughs> if you're uh, from uh, Naruto you probably go what you know but uh, I guess uh, there is a Akatsuki or a red moon uh, in uh, this comic as well yeah uh, Akatsuki basically means red moon. Aka is the word red in Japanese, and tsuki is the word moon. But in any case, it turns out that uh, he is a member of one of the royal families, and it turns out that there are seven of them, all with the name of uh, moon. So I presume there are other colors and uh, moon categories, something tsuki, right, uh, associated with the other royal blood, which indicates that, of course, as we keep on going and progressing into the comic, the other royal family members will probably appear as well. Now we start understanding something a little bit more about Cain. Now there was that point I remember talking about a few chapters back, uh, wondering why this person was uh, going out of his way to uh, troll Shin and Ko and get to the point where he would even kidnap uh, that little girl Kiri and uh, Aki and uh, force Kiri to kill Aki, right, by starving her. And we learn a little bit more in this chapter. Basically, the Akatsuki clan, according to Shin, was a vampire clan that was friendly to the humans. And so, of course, when uh, Kane mentions that he is a member of the Akatsuki family, this put a question mark on top of Chin because of the fact that why is this person or this vampire going against the humans, right? By kidnapping Kiri and Aki and having Kiri kill Aki, right? And what we find out from Kane is that somewhere along the way, the humans took advantage of the friendly nature of the Akatsuki from what I can understand and somewhere along the way they killed the Akatsuki clan probably when they found out that they were vampires they rebelled and went and killed them you know that brings up that uh, image if it, anybody has ever read uh, Debiruman or Devilman uh, that image of the humans coming to attack uh, certain families due to their association with the demons, right? And so, yeah, you see that in many different comics. And I guess that may have been the case for this one as well. So there is a deep-rooted hatred of the humans to Cain and the great desire to see an exact revenge on them. And so this is starting to become very uh, interesting. Now, with that said, Cain did the ultimate uh, insult to Cole by, yeah, going ahead and taking some blood from Shin. Yeah, they got into a battle again, and it seems that because Cain is a member of another royal blood, he is quite powerful, and he was able to, through his experience in fighting, take down Cole for a short period, and that gave him the opening to uh, take down Shin. Now, of course, that gave him the chance to, yeah, drink his blood. 
And oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not because boy did Shin, uh, not Shin, but Ko snap after that. And now we start seeing some serious power that's coming from Ko. It turns out that uh, Ko always carries bottles of Shin's blood in case he needs to power up. But because they are bottled blood, they don't have the power of fresh blood. And so now, Ko taking some of the blood from Shin directly, yeah, we see Ko turn into a, what is expected to be a very powerful entity. And what's interesting is what I would have expected is that this would have terrified Kane. But what you find out is that it excites him because of the fact that, yes, Ko turns out to be a very unique individual and it looks like somebody worthwhile to kidnap and take back to his master who we don't know who it is yet. So that seems to indicate that Kane has some serious confidence in his power to be able to take out Ko considering how powerful Ko is. And so this may be experience versus sheer brutal strength. Uh, which one will be able to uh, come out of this higher? I'm not exactly sure. Or maybe Kane has been holding back for quite a bit. And now he's about to show what he's capable of. But whatever the case, this was a very uh, informational uh, chapter. And it was quite exciting to see uh, Ko transform into a higher form. And it will be interesting to see just what happens in the future. Will Kane's prediction come true and he will be able to overwhelm Ko? Or is Ko's new power so high that it will basically dominate whatever it is that Kane has up his sleeve? So we'll have to wait at least till the next episode. And I will continue to upload more videos as these episodes come out. And thank you very much for watching this one. And until the next episode, yeah, happy manga reading. And as always, giant nice day, everyone.